Hello everyone. So today I'm using one of the, the photographs that I took. Um, it's called there, look, you see the title, reference photos from Canic Chase. You'll see that on the uh, on my Patreon page. I think this is the about the second photograph in on the, on the slideshow video. Um, I thought this was a nice composition to use. Couldn't resist using this one. So this is the, the watercolour I created from it. So I've kept it fairly Try to keep it as sort of light up. I haven't really changed any elements around or anything like that. Try to get all the lights and the darks in all the right places. So let's let's uh, quickly take a look at the materials I've used. So the colours for this one I've used ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey. I didn't use the alizarin, raw sienna, burnt umber, and light red. So six colours, and then three brushes. Got the large Romanson Hake. The number three rigger and then the size zero rigger. Right, let's start this one then by with a little clean water. Now, very simple sky. I'm just going to put a little bit of raw sienna in there just to act as a bit of variation on the, the blue that I put. So I'm going to clean the brush. Bit of blue, just a touch of Payne's grey in there as well. Not too much. And then I'm just gonna a bit more blue actually. It was a bit too grey. And then what I'm gonna do now is just use a clean piece of tissue just to lighten the horizon line just so profile the tree stand up. It also doubles nice with some clouds as well. So we've got a nice bit of texture there in the sky. Now looking at the photograph, I can just about see, I think there's some very distant, we're about there, some, some very distant things going on towards the horizon, not too much, just keeping this very, very simple. Some trees, and actually, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is just take the the uh, rigger brush. I'm just gonna pop in a few trunks, just like that. Very, very simple. Just pulling down. And then just pop the foliage on, just like that. These are just the trees you can see through the, the foreground ones. So that's all I'm doing for that. Now there are a few more over on the other side now. So if I'm just using that little brush again, and then I'm just gonna start from there, just pull up a load of tree trunks. So it, it should make sense in a bit. I pop those in and again just using the same colours as before. Just dab just using the corner of the brush just to dab on that foliage. Bring those round. Into the foreground. Something like Something like that. Let's clean the brush. I'm doing a bit of lemon yellow introducing for the first time. Let's introduce a touch of light red as well, I think. And that's just going to go just right in the distance. I just want something lighter. I'm just going to go with lemon yellow now. Got like some nice grassy areas. So if I just go a bit of lemon yellow, just pull that across. A 
little bit over here as well. There's a lot of bushes and things over on this right hand side, so I ain't got to worry too much about the middle ground there because you can't, you just can't see basically. But remember, this is just a, just an impression. All this is. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not going for life like realism or anything like that. Right, let's get this paper flat against the easel and then I'll start on the middle ground, the closer trees to us, the big ones, and see how they start to look. But what I might do first, make sure that's dry. There are some more distant trees first before I do those closer ones. So what I might do is just switch to the number three rigger. That's this one here. Bit of brown. And actually, I'll just do with the same as what we was using before. Bit of raw sienna. Lemon yellow, touch of ultramarine. And I'm just... I'm just flicking up a few little trees and things, a few little branches. Right then. Now same again, I'm going I'm going raw sienna. Just using the corner of the brush. Just suggesting these a bit more on the trunks around these. It's just getting a little bit dark. I'm introducing the burnt umber, ultramarine, just getting slightly darker. Clean the brush. Right. I'm just going lemon yellow. I'm just painting. Right, let's move down now. Coming closer. Just going lemon yellow. A bit of Payne's grey in there as well. A bit of light red as well, I think. And this is coming right down there. Just catching that there. A little bit of shadow amongst this undergrowth cleaning the brush, we'll get some lights in there as well just so there's a bit of contrast taking the excess of water off on the tea towel back into the lemon yellow over there as well. Just putting these darks in while I've got the dark colour on my brush. Oh, it's a bit of paint grey there just to really try and darken it a bit more. Right, let's get back to the lighter colours. So I've got to clean the brush. Bit of raw sienna. Yeah, 
this is the edge of the path now. Let's get a bit of lemon yellow in there as well. Pull that down from there. And what I'll do, I'll use a clean damp brush in a sec just to start pulling some colour into this path area. I think I want a little bit of blue in there, so I'm just going to pop that in there. Now what I'm going to do is clean the brush. Take the excess water off and let's start just blending some of these colours in. Clean the brush again when it gets too, too much colour on the brush. Just softening the edges and sort of blending it all together. Do something in here as well. Mix some of this up. In the brush when there's too much paint on it. Just soften some of that as well. Right in. We've got some big trees over on this left hand side, so I'm going to start off with the rigger brush. A bit of brown, a bit of blue, lots of paint, lots of water. I'm going to start off about there. Putting the big trunks in first and branches, and then I'll put the foliage in. Another one there. Put all the foliage on in a minute, just getting the trunks in first, just the main skeletons. Another one in there. A few things to the side. Right in. I'm going to dry brush this on now. I want it nice and thick. So I'm just going to squeeze the water out into the jar. Dry the brush on the tea towel. It's not going to be totally dry brush because there's a bit of the paint's quite a bit wet. So let's see how we, see how we get on. Start off with the raw sienna. I'm giving raw sienna on this one first. Then introduce a bit of lemon yellow. Get right into it. Right into this big block. Now I'm doing this for ultramarine, now this will darken the whole thing a little bit. These are like the shadowy areas. Where the darker tones are, and just popping some some of those in there. Well, I'm just looking where these trunks on the left hand side start. And I've brought them down a little bit too low, so I'm just going to push them up. Just using just a bit of paint on the brush, almost like an eraser. Just pushing them up there. Like that. That's where they're meant to be. It's not critical, but just gives it a just makes it look a little bit more like the photograph. Right, let's just make sure that's flat. And then I'll work on the trees on the right hand side, the closer, well they're mainly just sort of big, big trunks. But make sure that's dry.
Well, and now this time I'm going to use, I'm going to switch to the height brush now. So I don't want too much water. I'm just going to go a bit of brown, a bit of blue. Got a nice chisel edge, like just enough water to hold all the hairs together. Got a nice sharp edge. Right in. So first one, just a light touch, comes out something like that. And then we got one giving up there. There's a, a thin one giving up there. There's a wiggly one giving up there. Switch to the Riga brush now, just to pop in a few more. A few little twigs and things that are coming off there. A few limbs coming off either side of this. Smaller ones amongst these, a bit of variation. A few twigs and branches and things. And then there's also there's, there's something over on this left hand side that's, that's, that's casting a few twigs and things. I'm guessing this one's slightly closer. Well done, I'm just popping these and I'll pop, pop some foliage on in a minute. A few little lines and things dotted about. Well, what I'm going to do this time is just, just to get a bit of a contrast, I'm going to squeeze a bit of fresh paint out and use that. Um, I was going to squeeze a bit of raw sienna out, but I've actually run out. I'm waiting for some to come through the post. I've run out of paints. Squeeze that water out. Um, just dry the dry it on the tea towel, but like that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just looking at the. I think these ones are actually bare, but I might just stick a bit of bit of foliage on them. And I'm just going to dip, get to dip into that ultramarine first, and then just take a bit of paint like that. I think. That in there like that. I'm just going to stick some on here as well. Stick some on these as well, I think. Just a very, just, just, just touching the the, the, the fresh paint in there, just to something. I'm just going to stick a little bit on these. all this as well I think. Just have the nice 
Add a nice few little highlights here and there. Right, I think we're ready for some shadows now. So, see, looking out, there's a big open space there. I'm just wondering if I can just. There were some trees there in the photographs of, of I omitted them, but um, I think that, that'll do, I think. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is just pop some shadows in. So I'm just going to create just a simple shadow mix, which is going to be a bit of brown, a bit of red, a bit of blue. I'm just looking for a bluey grey colour. And try and get it all in one one mix. Holds quite a bit of paint this brush, so I'm hoping I can get it all in just just one application rather than having to remix remix it. So now looking at the photograph, I can just see a shadow coming. I'm going to say off this one. There's one sort of just cutting across the path there like that. But I think I might need another one just to. Pop that one in there as well, I and mean, then they're going a bit wobbly. Um, a few darks amongst these. Just soften off those darker areas. A few shadows under there as well. trees coming across there. Right. Dark songs there. Pull a big shadow across there, I think. There it is. Just experimenting, really. What sort of effects can I get? Um, there's a few. grass over there. See so what that looks like there. Pop those in. Also a few grasses that are down there as well. Right, what I might do now is just pop a, a little figure in. So give that a quick dry. Take the little, little rigger brush, just a tiny little one. And then right here, the, 
there is there's no there's, there isn't a figure in the photograph but i'm going to stick one in just to give it like a little focal point um just trying to get the scale out it's going to be quite small isn't it Do the just do the legs and oh, I'm having a little dog in there as well, I think, and then a couple of shadows from those pair. And I think let's just have a little bird up there in the gap. I'm going to call that one finished, I think. Do give that a quick signature. I'm going to sign it over here. And call that one done. So let's see how it. Let's stick a mount on it and then just compare it to the photograph. See how it compares. So here's our finished painting. So if we you can see there, if I can get it without the, the light shining on it so much. There's the, uh, the the can I get any better? That's about as good as I can get it, I think. There's the, the reference photograph I was working from. So I've, I've tried to keep it as faithful as I can. Um, starting with the sky, very, very simple sky, a bit of ultramarine, ultramarine with panes grey there, and then a few, lots of lighter bits to suggest the clouds, and then not much going on right in the background, just just very sort of background there, and then started putting in these distant trees. So once the trees were in, then it was time to put in these the tr the ones in in the middle ground which basically these these ones there behind these tree trunks so putting very very simply not much detail and then by the time i come around doing a lot of the closest ones in the foreground i just use i wanted these to stand out so i put these in with the hike and put them in really dark and then though, although there's not much foliage in the reference photograph I wanted to distinguish them from those ones behind, so I put in some neat lemon yellow with a bit of ultramarine just to act as a bit of foliage. And also put a bit of that in this foreground as well. Just acts nice like a little flowers and things growing in the in the uh, this the, the undergrowth there. And then you can see there's not much in way of, of shadow cutting across this path, but I wanted to make a bit more of that. So I've put in the one I could see in the photograph, but then put a few more in as well, just to try and um, add a bit more drama there in the foreground. That's why I put this path in deliberately light, a bit lighter than it is in the reference, just so these shadows would really stand out, look a bit more dramatic. And then with that shadow colour on the book brush, I wanted to darken the underside of these, where all the trees are basically, a bit more on this side as well, just to get a bit of, bit of contrast lights and darks and then there's no figure in the reference photograph but I thought just just wanted one in there just to act as a focal point so that's it for this one I hope you enjoy that thanks for watching as always many thanks for your support um, keep practicing if you've got any questions please don't hesitate to ask and I'll see you again soon